Today I'm going to have a look at the dashboard lights of my 1997 Camry. When I turn the headlights on, only half of the dashboard lights come on. So I'm going to take that apart and see what I can find. There's two screws in the top of the instrument panel. Right there. One right there. So we'll take those two out. To get the instrument panel out, we want to um, we want to hook our finger in these ends here, and then get the screwdriver kind of pry on that while we pull on this. And then we want to do the same thing on the other side. And just pry this out. We can't hook our finger in it because there's a clock instead of a vent there. Just get in behind that, pry it out, and that removes the whole bezel around the instrument group. Now there are four screws holding in the instrument group. There's one, two, three right there, and then there's another one over here. You can't really see it with the lighting. We'll remove those four screws. Once the four screws are, are out, then you can just remove the instrument group. Okay, to get the instrument group out, it, it seems like you should just pull it straight out, but that's not the case. You need to lay it back, pull it out just a little bit, pull the bottom forward and lay the whole thing on its back, and then it just slides right out. There's a wire harness coming in from the rear right here that you'll need to disconnect before you can pull it much further, but that'll give you enough leeway to get it out to where you can disconnect the harness. While you have the instrument panel out of the dashboard, if you'd like to clean the uh, plastic over it, mine's fairly dirty, you can just um, push down the little, the clear part of these clips, just push it down behind and it'll pop loose. You can see the back of this clip, just push that down, pops loose, do that all the way around, there's probably six or seven of them and then the plastic part will come right off. And you can also get the dust and stuff out of the, uh, there's a lot of dust in the bottom of my instrument panel, so I can clean that all out with a rag, and then I won't have to look at it while I'm driving. Just get all that out of there. It'll look like a new car. I'll just wash the, uh, the instrument panel cover with soap and water. After you've cleaned the, the bezel for the instrument panel, you just put it back on. Uh, this little hole is on the bottom side. Just make sure you get that lined up right. And then lean it back a little and slide it straight in. You can hear the catches clicking. Snap it back on. If you would like to remove the instrument panel all the way, um, you need to remove the connectors. I'm starting at the left with this blue connector on the far left. You just press the uh, release there, and as you press it, use your fingers to lift the ends of the connector. Press it down, kind of wiggle it back and forth with the ends and then just pull it right off. Okay, there's the connector. There's the little release lever that you need to press to get it out. And there's three of those, so we'll just go right across, do the middle one, press it down, work the ends back and forth and pull it right out. One more on the far end, on the right, press it down and just wiggle it off. There you go, and that's the one on the far right. Now, the panel comes all the way out. 
In order to test the bulbs, I'll just uh, I'll get a couple of pieces of wire and I'll strip the ends. Then I'll just take the ends of the wire to the battery terminals here. Make sure uh, I'm not touching anything with it when I take the positive side on. And obviously this tape is just temporary. Don't ever hook up a circuit this way in real life. Actually electrical tape probably would do better. I'm going to jam this one just down in the crack there and then tape it. On the positive side, make sure the, uh, the other end of the positive side isn't touching the frame of the car. That will give you a short, sparks, stuff like that. faster way that I figured out to test it um, is not to even remove the bulb from the console. Actually every bulb has two bare copper uh, contacts that it screws into, like if you take one out you can see there's a copper on this side and copper on that side and even with the bulb installed some of that copper is exposed so if I just take my test leads, my 12 volts and just put them on each side and touch that exposed copper I can see it, see how it lights up? So I don't even have to remove the bulb from the console to test it, I'll just do that. So now I can just start from this side go all the way across and if one doesn't come on that one's good then you can just remove it and test it again out of the socket you know in case you didn't get good contact or something but most of these are coming on with just uh, so you can see just touching them on the back here much faster getting any response from this one right here so I'll take it out and test it. Okay and still no response so I'll actually take it out of the socket and inspect it. You can just hold it up to the light and look through it. Sometimes you can see where the filament is broken. Very small filament. And you can even uh, you can even test it once it's out if you just um, the leads come out of the bulb and one goes up one side and one goes up the other side. So you can just touch it on the one side with one lead and then touch it on the other side with the other lead and this bulb truly is dead. So that's the second one I found that's uh, just dead. Okay, so I've tested all the bulbs and I found two of the small ones are out. When you, okay, when you touch one, some of these bulbs, if you touch them, it lights up the whole side of the, it, it lights up all the bulbs at once. The circuits are tied together. So. Obviously the, these large bulbs are tied together and you can probably see by looking at this one it's a bad bulb. It's, it's got issues. So this one had a green cover over it that fell off inside, the, inside of here so I'll have to get that out and put it over the new bulb. But we've got at least one bad big bulb. So my quick testing method doesn't work for the big bulbs because they're tied together. So you need to test them individually. Okay, so we had one good console bulb out of all of these. There was one that was holding down the fort. So uh, I need to buy quite a few of these kind of bulbs. So we need one, two, three, four of the large ones and two of the small ones. So since I don't have these sockets, I'm just going to leave those lights out. That'll be okay. That's It's traction and ABS, automatic braking system. It's fairly simple to replace the bulbs. Just take out the old bulb out of the socket and uh, go get a new one. Put the new one in. And then there's these little ears right here that just go 
inside the slots on the dashboard console and you just place it in there and twist it to the right about an eighth of a turn and it locks in place. Reinstalling the dashboard console instrument group is just the opposite of installing it. So the first thing you want to do is reconnect all these connectors. So we've got the, the brown connector would go on first. It's on the far right of the console. Place the console near the position. And uh, connect the brown in the hole where it goes. And then the white one is in the center. Just put that right in the center hole. Kind of hard to see it, so you just have to kind of look and then get it in the hole. Make sure it's engaged. And then the blue one on the far left, reconnect that. Snaps in place. Once everything's in place, we'll lay it down on its back, just like it came out. Put it in there in the cavity. Make sure these white tabs are in front of the black, uh, the black screw holes that are hanging down. And then uh, just set it up straight and it goes right in. And we'll put the four screws back in. Once the four screws are in, then uh, just replace the bezel. You can pretty much go in straight with that. And there are four different latches that need to be snapped in place. Just kind of, I work it from the right side. There it is. And then there are two more screws um, right up under here. There's one here and one here. You need to put those two in. And so that's it. That's, that's all you have to do to reinstall it. And then we can test it by turning the car on. And uh, once the car's on, we can test both blinkers. We can put it in reverse, neutral, drive, two, and L, just to see that all the lights are working. And then we see the lights across the bottom as well. So it looks like we fixed it. Thanks for watching.